Hello everyone, this is Roberto again with another podcast, I guess part 4 at this time. And um, yeah, I would just really like to talk about um, what has happened in the last few days. Uh, just a little bit of update on uh, apartment search, uh, telephone number, banking, um, uh, Incan or uh, Hanko or in English uh, stamp. So yeah, it seems like... Um, your best bet, um, again, if you have a Japanese friend for everything, uh, or if you have a Japanese person who can uh, go with you and translate and uh, maybe who knows how to do things, because otherwise it's, uh, it's possible to do, because you can meet Japanese people or, or, or agencies, uh, or agents, rental agents who speak very good English or are let's say foreigner friendly um definitely that's one way to go uh but the easier way is always to have uh, a friend who helps you uh now uh i i had a well i have a colleague who who had a friend who was apparently a, a rental agent uh, fudosan uh in Jap- in uh, japanese and uh we went to his uh, his working places, uh, his company, their office. It's a real small one, but uh, he was kind enough to show me what I wanted. Like uh, I, I definitely wanted to do a, a top floor apartment, possibly as close as possible to Takoda no Baba Station, which which is uh, basically where I'm going to work at. Well, not on the station, but near the station. <laughs> Um, I was looking for something around six to nine uh, uh, man yen. That's um, sixty to ninety thousand yen per month, and um, possibly internet as well. Now this is what I got. I got uh, and well, obviously in a in a calm, uh, not so busy environment, which is is already quite hard to do in Shinjuku. Or well, around Shinjuku, but this is what uh, we found. Uh, we actually went to two um, different ones. One was somewhere like thirty to twenty-five minutes away to the west from Shinjuku. I'm not sure which uh, station we went to. Even the my colleague, my Japanese colleague who helped me uh, with this uh, whole rental thing. He said that he never been there, although he's been living all his life in Tokyo. Tokyo is just so big, and you just don't seem to go to everywhere, even though you you basically live there all your life. Like uh, that wasn't too bad. The apartments were all right. I just didn't want to um, commute twenty five to thirty minutes every day twice. So that's basically one hour minus from your time. In a country where zangyo or overtime work is a must, uh, it's well basically uh, in my contract there is a uh, a kind of um, a section detailing flexi time, which is in fact basically an already uh, included overtime. Uh, it's uh, I can't really explain how it is. Uh, all I can say is that it's in my contract that I will have to work overtime each week, a certain amount of hours plus whatever you work without payment. Uh, yeah. So I mean, I I, I did the math and it's like uh, I could spend um, maximum thirty minutes commuting maximum but that's that's like from house to house because if you think about it okay you wake up in the morning you brush your teeth you maybe take a shower eat something 50 minutes already you take uh yeah you go to the toilet and stuff if something happens well you know <laughs> it can happen anything can happen and uh if you let's say you live in yokohama and uh and you you commute one hour each day. Now this is if the trains are not delayed. 
Uh, and in Japan, as far as I'm concerned, uh, working places do take... Uh, uh, they, they do frown upon you if you're late. Like, there is no reason for you to be late. So let's say one hour um, with, uh, with changing tracks and whatever, just one hour is basically the time it takes for you to step out of your house, go to the station, wait for the train, go with the train, maybe change lines, arrive at the station, walk to your working place and, and be like, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> let's, start to, let's start working. So I, it's in my contract that I have to start at 8.30 um, each weekday, which then puts me to, if I would live in Yokohama, that's one hour there, one hour back, that's minus two hours. I do like to sleep at least eight hours a day. Uh, plus, um, when it comes to lunch, uh, usually they allow you to have like 20 minutes to 30 minutes lunch, maybe one hour, it really depends on the company. But I have a, a friend who said that uh, she can only have like 20 minutes a day. And uh, yeah, I've been talking to a lot of people here since I've been here. It hasn't been even a week yet, but um, everyone seems to work until 8 or 10 p.m from the morning, of course, like maybe from 8.30 to 9.30, they start. And uh, if you think about it, like if you wake up in the morning, let's say I start at 8.30 and I finish no earlier than 8. So there I am, 8 p.m. at my working place, I step out and uh, maybe I take the train one hour back home or at 9 p.m. Um, if I want to go for, let's say, training or or running for an hour, that's already 10, let's say, but plus you have to go to the gym or whatever, so let's say it's like one and a half hours at least to do the minimum amount of sports, that's already 10.30. And then what do you do with your lives? It's already 10.30. It's, it's already like you have, you have one and a half hours to do your stuff, maybe. Uh, again, take a bath, um, cook something, whatever. So yeah, that's um, you have to really f um, min max it out. Like uh, now, I basically, uh, if if everything goes well with the application for this uh, rental property that I mentioned near Takadombaba Station, it should take me eight minutes to walk which is, well, Google Maps says it's eight minutes, but technically for for my speed, it should be like five minutes to work. Um, which is really good, like that's perfect. And um, let me just quickly grab the, the form. Well, it's not a form, the, the advertisement, because um, when, when we went to the rental, uh, company um, the guy like printed out maybe 10 to 20 sheets of paper just to show me the properties properly now this one is a 7.5 joe which is around well it's actually exactly 19.23 square meters it's a 1k which means it's a one room with the kitchen uh, together it's, it's well it's basically a one room apartment it's a studio with um, with the bath and the toilet together in, in one unit. Uh, there is a place for the washing machine, but no washing machine included. You, uh, you do have to take care of your washing yourself. Uh, there is a closet where you can put your stuff in. Uh, there is another closet. And uh, well, there's a hallway, which is basically just a, it's just a step. <laughs> that you step up to and you leave your shoes down uh, and basically yeah and there's a kitchen there's a uh, an electric i think it's an electric induction cooker i'm not sure about the induction part i guess it's, it's just a normal cooker as in like it's just a, a plate like a well fireplace stove i guess um what else do we have here well, there's one month of deposit, there is no agency fee. And the maintenance, okay, the, the apartment will cost me 65,000 per month, plus maintenance fee 6,500, which is 
<laughs> all right now because my japanese colleague came with me and he said that he's going to be my guarantor i then and that's really like that's a very big thing for a japanese person to do that for a foreigner um i didn't have to pay for the guarantor company i didn't have to go through all the hassle with the guarantor company which is which could cost you um again a half or one month um um money <laughs> of your, of your rental uh, so it's like uh, it would have been for me like maybe 32.5 uh, thousand to 65,000 yen and that's uh, per um, per contract so i just have to do that once um it doesn't say how long the contract is though let me just check oh there's some kind of uh, an insurance thingy per month 700 yen uh, there's an in there's an initial cost for uh, mm, lock changing that's a uh, 19 point that's uh, well it's around uh, 20,000 yen that's again once mm, there is no place to put your car or bicycle or motorbike which can be good for some people but i don't really mind because i'm living so close to my workplace uh and i do go uh running when i do the groceries so that's perfect for me uh t i think it's a one year contract though it seems like and there is again oh there's a 24 hour um uh, life insurance uh it's a uh, 16.2 thousand for two years but then i don't understand why we have the one-year contract though anyways it might be a two-year contract what else does it have it has um to toshi gas which means it's a it's the city gas provider i guess uh which i'm not really going to use but if, if you want to basically use something that uses gas i guess like um because um, to be honest, the accommodation that the company gave me, I looked at it, and there's this uh, small little socket outlet that says um, city gas on it. And it seems like you can install a stove or, or some kind of cooker that uses gas onto it. But then there is this electric stove, which basically, well, it technically uses electricity. Plus, I think... The hot water thing is also electric. So technically, if you don't have anything that uses gas, you just have to pay the electric bill. Which is uh, going to be, well, I don't know how much. But I think my utilities will will be like electricity plus water, maybe 3,000 yen, 4,000 yen. But don't take me granted for that one. Let's see what else do we have here. Well... Yeah, hot water stuff. Uh, elevator. Uh, it's a it's a four story high building, but it has an elevator in it. Uh, each apartment has a little balcony. Yeah, the cooker or electric stove. Uh, yeah, place for the uh, for the washing machine, but no washing machine uh, with it. There's a CATV which I think is cable. I think that's the, that's, that's the normal generic uh, Japanese cable TV, which again, I'm not really going to use unless I want to watch Dragon Ball Super on TV Tokyo every uh, every Saturday or... No, every Sunday morning, right? Yeah. At 9 at nine p uh, nine a.m. It says shower. Uh, then there's something... Oh, there, closet. Aircon. Um... Uh, each room has an aircon. If you, if you go to a rental property and doesn't have aircon, forget about it. Uh, it's really good. It heats, it cools, it does everything. Uh, yeah, it has Tokyo Denryoku. Oh, that's like... Um, that's basically just the Tokyo electric stuff. And, yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now... 
Uh, I've I've uh, I've had some other rentals that said internet included. This one doesn't have internet in it, but um, again, that's going to be another fight that I will have to do later on. But uh, yeah, I'll probably make a different podcast about that because that's going to be again another war with Tokyo. Uh, let's see what else do we have here. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Right. Uh, so yeah, I had other properties that said uh, you can only go there yourself. So if you're a pair or if you're bringing your wife or kids, whatever, some some owners allow that, some don't. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Yeah, internet. What some like this one doesn't say it allows pets or not. So I guess it does allow pets. Um, yeah, it really depends on the owner. Um, the rental agent guy even said that, um, well, like he showed me some apartments and he said, well, it's cheap because the owner lives downstairs and uh, she's a bit crazy. <laughs> I mean, that can basically ruin uh, a property's uh, price a lot for the owner. But it's good for you. I mean, if you can, if if you just put in an air plug and uh, uh, air plug, I mean ear plug, and you don't care, or you just just deaf or something, then it's fine. But I do like my top floor and stuff. Um, yeah. So things you have to look out, and I made a little list. Um, like how big is the room? What floor is it if you are uh, like me and you don't like anybody living on top of you and hearing those footsteps every day? Um, is there internet? How much does it cost? Uh, how much, obviously, is the rent? What's Is there any plus like maintenance, um, lock changing, cleaning fee, um, life support, uh, whatever? Uh, there are a lot of plus costs plus what's the initial cost so initial cost as i already detailed it it's first month's rent deposit um agency fee key money which is bribe uh obviously the key uh, the the lock changing fee uh insurance which is fire insurance basically um this 24 hour life support system whatever that I still don't know what it actually is, but you just have to pay for it. Maintenance fee and plus, obviously, uh, you have to also calculate your your utilities, electricity, gas, water, which again you pay after each month. Um, is there an aircon? Uh, is there heated water? Uh, how is the bathroom? I had a. a I had, an, uh, I had an apartment shown to me where it had this, um, I forgot the terminology for it, but it was basically like a basin. Like it was the most effed up thing I've ever seen for a bathroom. It's like a small basin that you can sit into. Well, as a Japanese person, you, you basically fit in it. But as a foreigner, if you are as big as me, I'm like six foot three, which is... Uh, one nine two centimeters around uh and i'm 85 kilos and uh well i'm not a small person well i'm not the biggest either and the guy looked at me and he said well you're not going to be able to shower properly there um it takes a lot of time to heat up the water in that type uh, i'm really sorry i can't remember the terminology for it 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 had some crazy english word though i don't know i never heard that one uh surroundings how is it? Is it is it is it a really calm neighborhood? Uh, is it near train stations that the trains just run around and 
is is it near a big road like a lot of uh, cars stop by the red signal and stuff like that uh now my apartment is actually quite close to a train station to to both of the takanobaba train stations because it, basically it's two trains crossing each other and um but the thing is like you can't really hear the trains at all because they because Tak Tak Baba is actually a big station. It's a well, it's a medium station, let's say, and uh, almost all trains stop by. That means they slow down, so you won't hear them like making all that much noise at all. Plus, Japanese trains are are quite well quiet. They're not noisy at all, and uh, yeah, if you live near the stations, it's not really a problem. Maybe the uh, the, uh, it maybe if you live really close to the station, like right next to the station, uh, all the people and the, and the loudspeakers going constantly could be a nuisance. But I live um, a few streets in, like a uh, kind of a, a, a separated neighborhood, which is which is nice. Uh, Plus, there are no cars at all. Like uh, there are no big roads there. the The nearest road is Vasudadori, which is quite big, but it's surrounded by big buildings, which, which do keep the noise out a lot. Uh, and uh, because it's it's like it's like downtown, uh, cars can't really uh, speed that much. So it's it's pretty good. It's a pretty busy place, but at the same time, very calm. At least my apartment is going to be. Um, yeah, if you like, how far is it from the station? That's really important as well because, as I said, you have to calculate how much you want to commute, and it's not just from station to station; it's uh, door to door. So that's also a good thing to keep in mind. And then, is there a, a bike, um, a bike, bike parking place in the house? So can you? actually just uh, take your bike in the, the the garden area of the house some properties do allow that but for example my property that i'm probably going to live in does not allow that at all you can't just leave your bike outside it's not that it's going to be taken away you can even leave it unlocked uh, basically anywhere but uh, actually the the ward uh, I'm not sure how to say that the uh, the ward police kind of stuff uh, well the, the people who take care of the streets and uh, all the public places they come and uh, they take your bike away if you if you park illegally and then you have to pay like maybe 5,000 yen to get it back and uh, it's all a hassle and you might even be fined uh, it's uh, it's not a good time plus you have to also keep in mind that can you put your bike uh in a parking lot near the station because let's say you live 20 minutes away from the station by foot but by bike it could be like maybe seven minutes now can you just leave your bike at the station and once you come back to work can you pick it up some places they allow it uh, some places I've seen that uh, there was a very direct notification, like a line. There, there was a map with a line around the station, and each street was like, a, like a, each. How should I say this? There, yeah, they they had it designated like from what point can you leave your bike uh, alongside the the road or something. Uh, otherwise, you'd have to uh, go to the station, and there are usually uh, parking lots, but you have to pay. I've seen something like it's. I mean, again, it's not expensive, but if you do it on a daily basis, it can be expensive. I've seen like six hours for hundred yen. I've seen ten hours for hundred yen. Maybe there are more, maybe there are less, but if you calculate it as well. Let's say you go to work uh, 20 times a month, uh, times two, that's 40, 40 times 100, yeah, 
you're already down 4,000 yen. If you leave it for, if you find a good place where you can leave it for 10 hours, let's say, and you don't have to do overtime work because then 10 hours times two, it's already 8,000 yen per month. <laughs> I mean, Tokyo cheapo, but uh, you have to keep your eyes open. Uh, again, a very important question is uh, when do you have to say yes? Because um, properties come and go very quickly. The reason why I said that I'm not sure if my apartment is still available. Well, they said it's still available and I've already kind of applied to it. I couldn't go into the room yet because uh, the people are still there for three more days. And after that, there's cleaning and blah, 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 blah. blah. So, uh, but I think it's going to be fine. Like, uh, there is not much uh, to be frowned upon when it comes to these uh, 1K apartments. Um, where was I? Yeah, so I've already basically said, well, I want this apartment, I want to see it, I want to, to um, apply for it. But still, the owner could say, well, okay, but uh, let's see, uh, you are European, I don't like you. <laughs> they can say that, they're the owners. Like, if they don't like something about you, well, may maybe they don't like IT people, or maybe, you know, they want uh, somebody older, or they want a female. It can happen. It's, uh, it's their property, if they don't want it. And there are so many people out there, and... Um, And um, yeah, it's technically, uh, they come and go very fast. So most important question of all, I guess, is when do you have to say yes? Like you go take a look at it and you probably want to tell the rental agent that you want it now. <laughs> because that's how it works. If you be like, oh, I think about it until tomorrow, then tomorrow you call up the agent and he says, well, it's already gone. And that happened to me, and uh, that's going to happen to you as well, especially if you come at this time of the year, which is March, April, everyone just, you know, the students, um, they finish semesters, they start semesters, especially in Shinjuku near Waseda, yeah, near, um, near all the universities, it's like that. Apartments come and go very quickly anyways. Uh, when can you move in? That's also very important, because you have to keep in mind that... Uh, there's this application, and then uh, there's the owner uh, thinking about it, and then there's the cleaning and lock change and yada, yada, yada. All these things usually, and plus the the contract and uh, wh whatever you need to do. Like, you have to have um, the, the funds, obviously. Uh, you have to have a, a Japanese account. Uh, you also have to have, or maybe you don't have, you may, maybe you don't need an account, but you definitely need, no, I think you definitely need the Japanese bank account to do that. Even for a share house, uh, when I used to live in Majiro, I needed to do a bank account first. Yeah. Uh, you also need a personal stamp, uh, which, well, I just did one. Uh, with my name, uh, Robert Ruto, in Katakana, because uh, that's what the agent said that I should do. Although you can buy something similar, like I used to have a uh, stamp uh, saying Roppongi, because uh, that's what uh, the ISEC exchange uh, rep representative bought me, because he couldn't find anything that said uh, Roberto. So I, I used Roppongi in a bank uh, of SNBC and some other places, and nobody really said, well, okay, well, that's not going to do. Some people frowned upon it. Some people said, well, uh, you should probably do a, uh, one with your name on it. So I did. It cost me around 2,000 yen, 1,800 to be exact, for a for normal 10 millimeter. Like, you don't need anything fancy. You need a case for it, and that's it. Not much. Like a case costs maybe like um, two. Uh, well, you can go to the hundred yen shop and buy one for one hundred yen, <laughs> like, or sorry, one hundred plus eight yen because eight percent is the tax, uh, which is usually not included in anything. Sometimes the shops do write it under the actual net cost, but you have to be careful. Sometimes the shops don't, and then uh, you'll be surprised at the counter. Like, okay, why does it cost this much when it was that much? But that's another topic. So when can you move in? It usually takes two weeks from the point you apply. 
for um, you know moving in, moving out, blah blah blah, cleaning, as I said. Uh, yeah, and I think that's pretty much it. Uh, what else? Of course, so more prerequisites you need a telephone number. Now, getting a telephone number, as I already stated, is not easy. There are a few options, like for a foreigner, the easiest option is to, is to, well, I this is, this is not advertisement, I don't get jack shit from Big Camera, but Big Sim, that's B-I-C-S-I-M, Big Sim, uh, offers a kind of deal for one year. You get um, I don't know some amounts of uh, of um, calls, SMS. Oh no, sorry. There are free packages. There's a data only package. There's an SMS plus data and the voice plus data package. And the voice plus data is one thousand six hundred yen per month, but one, you have to have a Japanese address, which then you have to go to the government office to register yourself. It can be a hotel or whatever, or a, or a guest house, or in my in my case, uh, a company-provided apartment. But you have to do that first. Uh, then you can go to Big Camera or Yodobashi Camera or whatever and ask for uh, a SIM card. Now, either you want to do this contract for one year, for 1,600, but then uh, you will have to use a credit card for that, or a debit card for that matter. Uh, now, it can be a foreign uh, credit card, but it has to work. Like, I have a Lloyd's TSB uh, debit card. Uh, I think it's a Visa. Uh, I think it was a Visa one. Let me check. I think it's Visa. That, uh, well, let me just double check that, because uh, that card was declined. Like, uh, I went there, I was like, oh, happy, okay, I, I, I'll, I'll do this. It, I even have money on it, so I don't know what the problem was. Plus, I think they just wanted to check if the account was all right. Uh, the lady said something about a one-yen start. This big same thing, so you don't even have to pay anything at the beginning. Uh, where the heck is it? Mm, darn it. Hmm. Oh yeah, it's here. The, the Lloyd's. Oh, it's a visa, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why, but it didn't work. Uh, well, I think I did have problems with that card in the in the past anyways. It's a British account, what can you do? And um, yeah, if you don't have that, you can use a Japanese um, bank account. But for a Japanese bank account, you have to have a phone number, a Japanese phone number, and uh, address. But then again, how can you get... Uh, so it's like um, which is cycle. So how can you get an address if you don't have a telephone number? Uh, but then how can you get a telephone number if you don't have a bank account, Japanese, or 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 your foreign account doesn't work, or foreign or your foreign credit card doesn't work? But then how can you get a Japanese bank account if you don't have an address and a phone number? So you, if you see, if you, if you understand where I'm coming from, uh, it's very frustrating. And unless you have a Japanese friend, a colleague, or some luck, uh, you can't do it. Now there is one way to do it. And I found this to be very expensive, but well, there are other options, I guess, but they are uh, similarly expensive. Um, it's PayG, P A Y G SIM. It's uh, basically a Chinese company renting uh, Docomo's network, which is a Japanese uh, service provider. Well, actually, everything is all about Docomo. Even Big SIM uses mostly Docomo service. So I guess out of the four big providers, well, actually three big providers, SoftBank, Docomo, and AU. Um, by the way, Y-Mobile is basically SoftBank as well. Uh, it's ba basically the biggest one, I think, is Docomo. So SoftBank uh, is also big. I don't know which one is bigger. Uh, but yeah, Docomo. So you can buy this PayG SIM, and that's good for seven days. You get a phone number, you get three gigabytes of data, three or maybe two, no, three gigs of data, but for the whopping 7,000 yen. 
and you get 60 minutes uh, voice and maybe 30 texts. I'm not sure about the texts. I really just need a phone number that I can give to the rental company then so that they can contact the owner uh, to let them know, yes, this guy wants to apply for this uh, for your property, blah, 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 blah. You need to have a Japanese phone number. Uh, foreign phone numbers are not accepted at all or overseas phone numbers for that matter. Um, but now that I got this phone number, I could go to the rental company. They said, okay, they're going to process my application. And um, now that I, I had a phone number, I could actually look for one, part-time jobs, very important. Second, I could open a bank account. Now I already had a bank account, but the problem with it was uh, I had it at SMBC, that uh, Sumitomo Mitsui Bank Corporation. Uh, it's a good bank. Um, I read that they don't like foreigners. That's not really the case. Um, uh, I forgot my pen actually to my cash card. And uh, they helped me very, like, they were very polite and they helped me. They didn't speak any English, so I had to use my Japanese skills to the max, but somehow I got a pin right there from the counter, so I didn't have to wait for it or uh, it being sent to me by mail. Uh, and I could even give uh, my company's phone number to them because uh, I had no Japanese phone number at that time, which I think I should have provided a Japanese phone number, but the lady said, well, it's it's okay for now, don't worry about it. Anyways, so I said cash card. Cash card is not a debit card, it's not a credit card, It's it worth nothing. It's basically just um, a way for you to go to the ATM and uh, get cash out of that account. Um... Now, today I've applied for Rakuten, and I think that's one of the easiest and most foreigner-friendly um, companies. I've applied for a bank account plus debit card, Visa One. Uh, I don't like credit cards much, and I don't like overspending either, and I don't need a credit card, so that's why I went for a debit card now. Obviously, you you guys might know the difference between credit and debit, uh, but to be able to do that, I needed to have a Japanese phone number. Now, after I, uh, well, this takes, this this bank account processing takes around um, one week to two, two weeks maximum because they're going to send it to you by post. Um, and once I have that, I can go back to BigSim and uh, apply for this one year contract of 1,600 voice plus data, free gig by the way, um, and that's the cheapest option. And uh, that's where I'm at right now. I'm waiting for uh, Rakuten to send me, or, well, to decline me my uh, debit card and uh, bank account because they could do that. Why not? Uh, and then after that, we're going to see. For now, I think I'm good. There are some other banks. If, uh, if Rakuten decides to not give me uh, this opportunity, then I might just uh, say a few and go for something else like Ribobank or I might even just try SMBC. Maybe I can get a debit card there, I don't know. Uh, right. Uh, right, 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 right. Well, again, I'm not sure if a debit card will work, but since it's a Japanese debit card, it might actually work for me to buy a Japanese number at BigSim finally. Uh, as I said, the other option is at Yodobashi Camera, which uh, they do provide a similar thing to Big Sim. Uh, I think it's also Big Sim, though, but it's it seems like a different package and different process. Um, these are the two big go-to places if you want to get some electric stuff, or Akihabara, but that's again a different uh, story. Um, right, um, I think I'll wrap this up. That's all about, uh, that's like maybe part two of rentals or maybe even part three and uh, part two of... Uh